uh, you know, the season that we are in, which uh, started uh, on the 21st of June on the winter solstice, which is uh, the season is controlled by Uset, um, uh, Umbizis, you know, the destroyer. Uh, everything that, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 destroys uh, the energy that is, uh, you know, destroying, that is the set energy. Any spirit of uh, opposition is controlled, uh, you know, by this uh, principle. Uh, uh, entropy. entropy, you know, um, uh, means everything that is created, it has to, you know, reconcile the back to its uh, original state. So Uset can never be destroyed. Uset is a necessary force um, uh, that, uh, you know, we will learn more about from Mukoko. And the uh, Abad should be, you know, aware of the signs and everything that happens uh, in their life. Um, uh, as we are all influenced by, you know, the, the energy of Set. Uh, I've had, uh, you know, my personal experiences, uh, you know, which then confirm that uh, we are in the season, uh, you know, of set, but uh, Wongu Moon is affected. Any opposition that uh, you meet, any difficulty that you meet, uh, you know, during this season, you must then be able to interpret it in the proper, you know, context of what is happening. Meaning, we need to learn, you know, from all those uh, negative traits that are associated, uh, you know, with set. And they say that uh, the only way for you to actually conquer or destroy said is to go by the ways of my art. Do good, act, uh, you know, uh, with that uh, consciousness of my art in everything that you do. Then you are in a good position to actually defeat said. Chogoza Koko, you know, we can go ahead. Thank you so much, Mukuli, and thank you so much to the Great Empire of Kemet for inviting me once again to share if I may be allowed to share my screen. So we have our moon cycles, which as we've said, are aligned to the moon. And today we're in a lunar eclipse because we're in a moon cycle. And when we speak about these cycles, like the cycle of set, for example, we are actually speaking about different moon cycles. We're moving according to the cycles of the moon. Um, and we have said that the, the quintessential um, and the first moon calendar was that of the Lebombo bone found not too far from here, just at the border of Mpumalanga and Swaziland. We also have solar cycles. Solar cycles are determined by the revolutions of whatever planet around the sun. And we have our Inzalayalanga right here in Mpumalanga, which um, is our first known solar calendar to humanity, um, which is not too far from us once again in Bumalanga. Here we are at the source of Kemet, a location, a time, a movement, and a consciousness. And then we have stellar cycles. And last week we looked at the zodiac of Dendera, you know, where we looked at the different, what the zodiac means, you know, and how constellations move through the sky and how we're able to look at the night sky, which our great Sanusi, Vusama Zulu Kredomuto, would tell us is vitally important if we want to understand what's going on within us. And these are the zodiac constellations, which are one other aspect of our cycles. So here, earlier I said in Kemet, there were different cosmologies according to the different temples. And each of them had a particular way of viewing or seeing how it is that the cycles um, of, um, of, of, of the deities were organized and also how creation came into effect. And here, according to the great emperor of Kemet, we know that we have, once again, know thyself is an axiom that is propagated by the great emperor of Kemet. And we have different cycles as we see here, where we are right now, we're here, around, which started around the 20th, 20th, 20th to 21st of June in the cycle of Set. And we have all of these other deities that are dominant energies or dominant archetypal energies in a particular moon cycle. So here we are, the cycle of Set. What does this mean? Who or what was Set? Now here we see a, a relief in the temple, I believe it is the temple of Edfu. And what we have here is Heru up here, uh, as we can see. And we always recognize Heru by the crown that he wears. 
And uh, we see him here having killed this little, uh, uh, this little uh, creature at the bottom here, which has diminished. And this creature which has diminished here is actually Set. Now Set takes on various forms according to Kemet. And one of the forms it takes is the form of a hippopotamus or just a strange creature that is a mix of creatures because of the nature of Set. And uh, here what we have in this particular uh, relief is the triumph of Haru over Set. I'm going to go into that um, in more detail later on in the show, in the uh, talk. In order to understand who Set was, we must first realize who his grandfather is, who his ancestors were, and where he lies. Earlier we said that in Kemet we had different temples, and each of these temples had different cosmologies or cosmogonies. Now, the first, the temple that we, is of relevance to Set is that of Anu, which the Greeks called Heliopolis. Now, if we think of the word Helio, Helio is related to the sun. And this is the place of the Ra cosmology. The Ra, which has erroneously been called by the Greeks as the sun god. He is not the sun god. He is the epitome of the sun, you know, as the sun, as that star that animates and that gives life to who we are. And in this particular cosmology or cosmogony, we have the Iliad. Iliad means nine. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine deities that are part of this particular Iliad. We begin with the source, which is Atum Ra. That is the, the, the source God, the source deity, who then creates Shu and Tefnut, the principalities of air and water, they're equal and opposite. From them, there they create Geb and Nut. Geb we've known as the manifest, which is the, what we live now, which we can see, think, touch, feel. And Nut, which is the primordial waters from which all things come. And Geb and Nut as consorts birth Nebthet, uh, not Nephthys, according to the Greeks, Oser, not Osiris, Oset, not Isis, and Set. And Osar and Oset are actually husband and wife, brother and sister, husband and wife. And we just, let's interrogate this in terms of how the alchemetic ancestors viewed relations, views relationships. Osar and Oset are here, brother and sister, but they're also brother as, you know, husband and wife. And then Set and Nebthet are brother and sister, but they're also a husband and wife. You know, so this is a different way of looking at relating because it's actually about how the masculine and, and feminine principles interrelate and interconnect. This is what these um, uh, uh, cosmologies uh, remind us of. And so who then was uh, set or what was set? We've said that set was part of the Iliad of Anu. Set is a consort to Nebthet. He's at once her sister, his, her, her brother, and he's also her husband. She is his wife. He is a brother to Osar under Set. Set is said to be the deity of war, of chaos, of storms. Set is the deity. He's the instigator of confusion. He's the destroyer. He's associated with disorder, with foreign lands, foreign people. He's associated with the colors of red and black and very often with red because from carnage you often see blood. So Set is the one who's responsible for destruction for absolute mayhem, for disorder, everything that we consider as the opposite of peace, of order, of ma'at, that is set, the exact opposite of ma'at. But set was not always the principle of disorder and chaos. In the early dynastic period, that is way back, you know, more than three to 4,000 years ago, set was actually a benevolent deity. Set was the deity of Upper Kemet, whose name was invoked for love spells. And of course, because he's a consort and a brother to Nebthet. And Nebthet is the deity, is the goddess associated with love and harmony and, you know, and all things sweet. So he, as her husband, had to have these qualities. And so he was, at the time, invoked for love spells. Set saved Ra from the serpent Apophis, an evil creature who tried to stop the, the journey of the sun through the night sky towards dawn. So because of Set in the early dynastic period, we, uh, uh, we know that Set is the one who allows the sun, Ra, his great grandfather, to come birthed every, every morning, every day. It is because of Set who went to, uh, to, to, to defend 
uh, Ra, against all odds, that we see the sun every day, and therefore we have the cycle of life as we know it. Set in the early dynastic period was the benefactor who helps people in life, and he also provided for people after death. But with time and with the introduction, we have had a session with Mkulu when we spoke about what happened that set, uh, that, uh, that uh, the, the, the empire of Kemet fell. And we traced this and we realized that as we started seeing the introduction of the lighter races, you know, the Hiskos, the Iranians, etc., the cosmology started to change along the way. And Set, who was originally a benevolent deity, by the time of the New Kingdom, became a malevolent deity, a deity associated with all things maleficent. And he was known as the first murderer who killed his older brother Osir in order to reign over the world and then killed his Osir's son, his, uh, his nephew Heru, when Heru then had to come to reorder uh, Osir, uh, reorder the world and reorder Ma'at. We often see him as this interesting character um, kind of dog-like, but not quite dog-like, you know, with strange features as he has morphed into this malevolent deity that we know today. So I'll begin with a version, a version of the story of Asar or Set and Set. It is said according to this particular version, and we must realize we have differing cosmologies and because we have different cosmologies, we have different versions of the different, uh, the different stories or the different metaphors, which are really just metaphors for life. So in this particular metaphor, we are told that Osar and Oset, the husband and wife, the benevolent, uh, the, the brother and sister, were the great ones who took over in order to, to become king and queen of the empire. They ruled according to the principles of Ma'at, Everything was in prosperity. Everything was peace. You know, everything was abundant. There was no crime. There was no destruction. There was no chaos. Now, the younger brother to Osar, Set, as we have seen in the Ennead, was jealous of his older brother. He could not understand why is it that uh, Osar is the one who has ascended to the throne? Why is it that he with his wife, Oset, are the ones who are in control of the whole world? And so Osar, uh, Set became jealous. And in one version of the story, he killed his brother, put him in a casket, which is threw into the depths of the Nile. Oset, uh, the, the, the loyal, uh, sacrificial wife of Oser, in her devotion, went and found this casket, brought Set, uh, Oser, Oser back to life, and put him back onto the throne. Set was not to be deterred. He was still jealous, and in fact, his jealousy had become more and more and more extreme. And because of this, he then once again usurped the throne, killed his brother Osir. This time, he chopped him up into 14 pieces, and these 14 pieces he cast to the ends of the earth. Now, Oset, once again, in her devotion, takes the wife of Set, which is Nebthet, takes the wife of Set, and together they traveled to the ends of the earth to look for the pieces of Osir. They find 13 pieces of Osir except the phallus, the penis which has been eaten by a fish. But Oset in her devotion, in her love, in her ma'at, and is able to work with the deity, work with the principles of nature in order to create a phallus and she remembers Osir, brings his 13 pieces together with the created phallus and through this, she, uh, she in, impregnates herself and conceives Heru. She hands Heru, her embryo, to her sister, Nebthet, who is another form of Heteru, Het meaning house, house of Heru, Heteru, who then becomes the one who's the surrogate who carries Heru in pregnancy until they're birthed, he is birthed, and then he is trained because his ultimate destiny is to overthrow his uncle Set in order to restore Ma'at and bring Osir, the principle of unity, the great Godhead, back into his role as the principal deity that rules uh, Kemet. Now, what happens is that then Heru does grow up and at first he's impetuous, at first he is arrogant, 
and he goes to fight his uncle Set. But in his impetuity, in his arrogance, he doesn't have the skills and the wisdom needed to know how to, uh, to, 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 to battle his uncle. And therefore Set overthrows him and Set renders him blind. Set almost kills him. And then what is needed is Tehuti. Tehuti, the principle of wisdom, comes to, uh, to Heru and gives him the Uchat, his third eye, and gives him his actual eye so that he not only has sight, but he has insight. And with this insight, Heru is able to then take over the throne. But what is interesting about Heru is that he does not render Set into the principles of, um, of, 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 of hell. He does not put him in prison. What he does is he transforms Set. Instead, he allocates him to rowing, to becoming a rose man in the boat of a seer who is the god of the underworld. And it is in that place that Set is able to realize his true nature and become once again a god or deity that is a necessary deity for the times that we're in. And so Set is transformed from the malevolent into the necessary, the necessary opposition that is needed for us to realize our unity, for us to realize our divinity, for us to realize Ma'at again. So is there any relevance of set to where we are today? And how do the energies uh, presided over set relate to this time of year that we're in? Earlier, I have said we are in a very special day today. We're in the full moon. This full moon is the full moon of set in this particular cosmology. In other cosmologies, it is the full moon of Tehuti, the principle of wisdom. It is also a lunar eclipse, a penumbral lunar eclipse that started just after five o'clock this morning and ended just after seven o'clock this morning. It is also the conjunction between Sirius. Sirius is associated with the feminine, with Oset, and it's a conjunction with that time. And it is in this time when we're moving away from the winter solstice, moving towards the summer solstice. So we're moving away from the darkest hour of our planet from the longest night, the shortest day, the winter solstice, the menstrual cycle, as we've said, of the planet. And it is at this time that we are presided by this particular principle called set. We have said that this principle of set began actually on the 21st of June this year, and this was the beginning of the winter solstice, the time when the, the, the Earth's was tilted furthest away from the sun. So that's the darkest time, you know, and this is the time when we seed, the time when we go within, the time when we go into deep, deep, deep reflection. It is the time of the utmost feminine, the time of darkness, because everything comes forth from the darkness. If there was only light, we would have no life. We need the darkness because it is the darkness of Nut that births the many stars and births the many suns. So set is absolutely critical to this particular solstice period, this winter solstice, the time when we go within in order to, 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 to reflect uh, and into what it is we need to do in order to bring light and to bring the sun back, you know, by the time we get to the summer solstice in December. So how does this period of latency relate to me, my thoughts, my actions, and the recurring goings on around us, such as gender-based violence. Let's look at what we have seen in the past two weeks, or let's just even look in the past month and see what we have had happen in and around us, in and around our, our communal life, never mind what's happening in our individual lives. We have seen that the coronavirus, especially here, in South Africa, when we stepped down to level three, has amplified. We have an alarming rate. There was a day when we had more than 6,000 new cases found in one day of the coronavirus. Our deaths are increasing at an exponential rate. Uh, whether or not people believe that the coronavirus exists or not, whether it is made up or not, is irrelevant because the fact is there is something right now that has thinned the veil between life and death. This thinning of the veil between life and death is causing many, many, many people to depart the world. 
but not everybody who's departing this particular world at this time is in the right place to depart the world. Many are being taken by surprise. So when they go into the other realms, they're not going to become benevolent ancestors. Unfortunately, when they're going into the other realms, they're going to be confused. They're going to be wandering spirits. They're going to be malevolent spirits. So in line with this coronavirus, which may or may not exist as according to what some people believe or do not believe, but in line between this particular energy that is impacting us today, we are creating more deaths upon this land as we know it. And we're creating more and more malevolent spirits within the nether realms, within the inner realms. And unfortunately, less benevolent ancestors to help us with this time. So we're seeing Set here. We're seeing that Set is the god or the principle of chaos because right now we're seeing this increase in chaos, this increase in mayhem. Our hospital systems are completely chock a block. They cannot cope. Our education system is suffering. Our economic system is suffering. Everything is suffering under the burden of this virus. And we are also seeing here that this virus is not just a physical or biological virus, but we're experiencing this virus here. We experienced it 20, in, on the 21st of June, where we experienced hacking into our, into our session on that day because other viruses are abounding, computer viruses, because they're just manifesting what's happening in the planet. You know, so we're increase, seeing an increase in cybercrime. We're seeing an increase in all sorts of things that are actually seeking to crash the system as we know it today. We're seeing, as we saw in the previous cycle, an increase in uh, police brutality and all other types of brutality. And of course, the George Floyd movement is testimony to that, where a policeman could literally just hold on to somebody for eight minutes or more until he died with onlookers. That cannot possibly be something that's done in the, in the time of Ma'at. That can only be something that's done in the time of Set, the time of absolute chaos and absolute mayhem. When we've become desensitized to good and bad, to harmony, to interdependence, interrelatedness and interdependence, when we've become desensitized to Ubuntu, when we've become desensitized to how I relate to you as another Muntu, how I relate to Hantu, to everything around me, how I relate to time and space, Hantu, how I relate to modalities, to beauty. We see this in the brutality that we're experiencing around us. And we are seeing it in an absolute increase in gender-based violence, in child abuse, in those who are supposed to be the ones who love us the most, those who are the ones who are supposed to be the ones who are propagating ma'at between us the most are the very ones who are not only beating, but killing those they are suppo supposed to love. We're pushed into this lockdown situation and this lockdown situation has created inner turmoil, inner, inner violence in between each and every one of us. And this inner turmoil and inner violence, this inner state of entropy, this inner state of chaos has caused us to want to see ourselves as the enemy and to see that which looks like us as the enemy. And therefore we engage in what in medicine would be called an autoimmune response, you know, where we start to attack ourselves and we attack our children, we attack our wives, and in some ways, the opposite. We have wives who are attacking husbands. You know, we're having killing that's happening. So, and I specifically chose this particular poster because the colors associated with, with sets are usually red and black, where red and black meets, where the blood meets the blackness. This is where we find set. So we're seeing an increase in that in this time that we're in. We're seeing because of COVID-19, we're seeing an increase in the potential for recession, in the, in the potential for an economic uh, breakdown, an economic collapse. We're seeing a need to revise our economic systems, you know, back to those of Ubuntu, because what this is telling us is that this current economic system that we're in, where in South Africa, we have the highest rate of inequality or close to the highest rate of inequality, where we have poverty in its, in its abundance, where we have, um, you know, unemployment or other un, 
uh, ways of, of people having livelihood, which has just increased during this coronavirus period, during this lockdown period, seeing we need to reimagine, rethink, how do we in this time of SIT, how do we ask SIT, who used to be benevolent and is now malevolent, how do we draw from that to see how do we recreate Ubuntu, how do we recreate Ma'at, how do we recreate an ascension away from the recession. We are seeing violence of all forms. And here, let me talk about different types of violence. When we think of violence, we think of gender-based violence and we think of it in terms of either the physical beating, the fist to the face or the gun to the head. We think of it also as the emotional abuse because there's an a lot of emotional abuse which happens and for which there are no outer scars. And many times this is even more difficult to handle than the inner, than the outer scars of a bruised eye or a broken, uh, a broken rib. But we also know that we're experiencing um, um, the gender-based violence in areas of spirituality and areas of the mind. There's a lot, there's a lot of games that are being played. And when we see how this is playing out at a more macro level, this is what we may call structural violence. Structural violence is, is what um, we have, what we call the, tri the violence triangle where we have direct violence, which is that which we can see. You know, we can see when a man has beaten a woman or when uh, a, a man, a father has raped his child. We can see that. We can see when there are casualties of war, when we have maimed, uh, you know, people on the side of the road. We can see that that is direct violence. We can see violence when um, our homes are shattered by Cyclone Idai. We can see violence in our tornadoes, in our earthquakes. We can see the, dis the destruction, you know, that happens. But we have a type of violence that we can't see. But this violence that we can't see is the violence that is responsible for the direct violence that we can see. And this is a structural violence. This is the systems, such as the systems of apartheid, the systems of discrimination, the systems of inequality. These are the systems of subtle racism, not overt, very subtle racism. The, 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 the systems of subtle sexism, the systems that pit one against the other, say one is lesser than the other. And they find ways of weaving it into the system so that you have a whole people's who are descendants of the great uh, empire of Kemet, who believe they're lesser, who believe that because I'm black, I'm lesser. And because I'm a black man and apartheid and colonialism has told me I am lesser than the white man, I need to feel my power. And therefore I am going to hit or abuse the one thing that I can have power over because I seem, I happen to have superior physical strength so I will beat my wife. I will rape my child because I am burdened under structural violence. I'm burdened as we see in America under unfair incarceration of black men, you know, because they have been not only incarcerated, they have been emasculated, just like we have here, the emasculation of men by the system, the rape of our masculinity by the system, which causes the ripple effect in gender-based violence, the rage that uh, we see in gender-based violence. And this is structural violence. It is a violence that is fed by cognitive violence, which is the violence that exists in the mind. Now, when we see the direct violence, we can go and we can say men are trash. Yes, we can do that because we see that it's the man that is hitting the woman or the man that's raping the, um, the, the, the young girl. But that man was born of a womb of a woman. And this womb that the woman was born of, you know, was also distorted and has been distorted through the violences of, um, of, of our distant past and our present past and our, our recent future. You know, through these violences, both are perpetrators, both are victims. And we must always be aware of the cycle between the perpetrator and the victim. So we have all of these violences which are reaching and keeping to the destruction we see in this particular picture, which is calling us to come into a place of set, into a place of peace, rather. 
And then we're just seeing complete desolation. Our systems are falling apart. Our schools are struggling, you know, because they're having to reimagine a way of functioning because of this increase in the deaths or the cases that are happening because of the COVID-19 or coronavirus-19. We're seeing a burdening of the hospital systems, pushing it to the brink where it's saying, wait a minute, there's another system that needs to happen here. What about our indigenous knowledge systems? What are indigenous healing practices? Where are they in the picture? Why have they been forgotten when we're looking into how to heal this particular place? And this forgetting, this illegitimization, this invalidation, this marginalization of our indigenous practices is a function of set. It is a function of that malevolent God, which seeks to bring disorder, which seeks to separate, which seeks to segregate, which seeks to marginalize, which seems to el seeks to eliminate, which seeks to move away from Ma'at, from Ubuntu, the interdependence, interrelatedness, and interconnectedness of all that is. I'm just going to go back a few slides because I think I have missed out on a question that I wanted to answer. And which is, what is the relevance of set now? Because we have seen that set is the principle of chaos. And we're experiencing this chaos at a macro level in many different ways. Now, I'm sure that each, if anyone, each and every one of us goes into our own personal lives, we'll see set happening in many ways. We'll see our, our relationships, our closest relationships taking strain. We have seen many filings of divorce happening during the lockdown, because at one moment you loved this person, now you're pushed closer together. And this polarity, this opposition of being in close proximity, where you have nowhere to hide and nowhere to run from yourself anymore, has caused people to really start seeing the set in each other. And in each other, because set exists in each and every one of us, in as much as Osir exists in each and every one of us. So we're seeing an increase in things such as accidents. We're seeing an increase in our, our, our personal lives, our personal affairs, our economic affairs, our educational affairs, you know, our interrelating, our inner health, our outer health. It's all struggling in this time of set. This, I'm sure, is something that's happening in everybody's life, even if all that's happening is a fear of coronavirus, a fear. And fear is, is the attribute that set uses in order to bring control over the world. Fear is how set, um, set comes in to make sure that you have a medical aid or an insurance policy, because it's always putting fear upon you in order to say, you may die in the future. You know, therefore, because of that, you need to put an A, B, C, and D. And therefore, you have this whole system that steals based on fear. And this is set in the system we have today. But in this particular time that we're in, we're being told that, no, something new must be created. And this thing that is new that must be created is premised on something old. It is premised on the law of reciprocity on the laws of Ma'at. It is premised on interdependence, interconnectedness, and inter interrelatedness. It is premised upon Ubuntu, you know, where Muntu comes into right relationship with uh, Hantu, who comes into right relationship with Kintu, who comes into right relationships with Kuntu. We are in right, right relationship with everything, with our land, with our planet, with the cosmos, and with each other. So at a time like this, a time of absolute chaos, what should we be doing? What, 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 what activities should we be doing? Let's link that right back to the cycles. This cycle of set began on the 21st of June, 2020, when we had our new moon, we also had our winter solstice. And in this winter solstice, we said this is the time when the sun or the planet is moved furthest away from the sun. It is our longest night. It is our shortest day. And at night, if we look at the cycles of time, when is it that we go into the dream? It is at nighttime. When it's dark, that is when we go into sleep. That is when we go from the, para, from the sympathetic mode into the parasympathetic mode. And it is in this parasympathetic mode, in this time of darkness, in this time of stillness, in this time of, 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 of the feminine, in this time of coolness, that we can best access wisdom. We cannot access wisdom in the hurry and the flurry of all of the sun. The midday is not the time to access wisdom. It is midnight, the darkest hour, 
that we access um, our inner wisdoms. It comes through our dreams. We realize this when we wake up at three o'clock, our ancestors' hour, when we paddle at that time, it's because we've gone through and gotten the wisdom of the sages, the power of Sekhet, the power, the wisdom of Tehuti, which we are bringing out into our, our Mpatlo, you know, in, at, uh, at three o'clock in the morning for those of us who follow the cycles in our African spirituality. So because this is a time of inner darkness, this is a time of inner reflection, we should cease to be engaging in activities which are outward, but we should be engaging with activities which are inward. So we would not in this time try and have, for example, a marriage or um, you know, great social gatherings or an election or anything of that sort, because this is the time that we should be reflecting. We can come into the place of joy, you know, when we start seeing the harvest, then we can start to coming into those um, activities such as marriage or engage, engaging in festivities, you know, because this, the time that we're in right now is a time of deep, deep reflection. It is the time of seeding that which we want to see by the time we get into the summer solstice, which will happen in uh, December around 21, 22, 23 December. So set because of the destruction that SET has caused, and we see it with the lockdown, the destruction of coronavirus caused us to go into lockdown, caused us many of us to have to move away from our, our offices and the hustle and bustle, to move away from you know, the activities we used to do, going to the movies, going to a chisanyama, whatever it is that we used to do, because it is asking us to go within, to reflect, to see, wow, my life is falling apart. The planet is falling apart. We're actually on the brink of a sixth extinction. And this is the only extinction in the history of the planet that is primarily caused by the hand of humanity. You and me are causing the destruction of the planet. We are seeing it in increasing earthquakes, increasing volcanoes, increasing tsunamis, increasing cyclones. We're seeing it in, in the increase that the planet is revolting now because it is saying, whoa, wait, stop. It is time to go in, reflect. Is the system working? No. How do we go back to restore Ma'at? So this is what we should be doing at this time. Deep reflection, deep introspection. Oh, Toroza Koko, you know, uh, that's, that is very, very profound. Uh, because, uh, you know, I, I normally say that uh, the, 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 the structural, you know, uh, the, the system that uh, we operate under, um, uh, as you um, uh, rightly put it, it is, uh, you know, somehow influenced by set. It is the, you know, structure that is full of divisions, you know, and the destruction that was brought uh, by colonizers uh, here, you know, uh, in the continent. And I, I think when uh, Ma'at was still alive on the continent, when we talk about Kemet, we're talking about a period, uh, you know, an era where Ma'at ruled everything, you know, on earth. And uh, these colonizers have uh, brought uh, this structure, which is influenced uh, by Set. I still say, you know, uh, Koko, that uh, uh, our leaders are guilty of a crime against uh, you know, African and black people. Why? Because they came and imposed this uh, set influence, uh, you know, political and economic structure on the continent. And uh, on that day, everything just changed. You know, the collapse of my art, which led us to where we are now, where the planet itself is actually rejecting everything. The biggest question and challenge is that, uh, you know, do we have the leadership to actually see, have the foresight, have, uh, you know, the, the, the eye of Heru, you know, um, uh, replace uh, you know, uh, uh, in their system for them to see what, uh, you know, Mother Earth and, uh, you know, Nudes and Gap are actually calling us uh, to do. The, 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 the thing that uh, I always, uh, you know, hope I will see is for people to realize that, uh, you know, the structure, the political and economic structure that we live under, it is a crime against African and black people. And those who preside over the structure 
must someday, you know, uh, account for what, uh, you know, they've been doing, you know, uh, to the rest of the continent, to the rest of humanity, because by imprisoning our, our, our identity and our way of life as African people in our own continent, you know, you are guilty as charged as those who impose this uh, set influence structure corporate. Absolutely, Mkulu. And I think this goes back right to the axiom of the great emperor of Kemet, which is know thyself. Um, it goes back to the other law, which is uh, so within, so without, as above, so below. And also yesterday is today, today is tomorrow. What Mkulu is speaking about is that principle of Ma'at, the last one. Yesterday is today, tomorrow is today, um, which everything comes back to today. So what has happened is we have not been able to look into the past, Sankofa, and we have not been able to look into the future, you know, which is Sankofa creates in the future, in order to, to see what the complete feedback system would be by the systems that we have taken on right now. And this has come from a, a stripping away that unfortunately colonialism did through the structural violence of colonialism and of course here in South Africa which was amplified by apartheid you know which really stripped away our ability to know ourselves and to know and 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 this lack of knowing ourselves will uh, you know you know brings us into where I'm going to go into now you know uh, which is that it's it has hindered our ability to know the energies that we work with and how to work with those energies so right now we're working with a distorted set. As we have said before, set was actually benevolent at the beginning, and then with time, set became malevolent. And, uh, and then because of this, all sorts of things were created where we're told that black, we were called the dark continent because the color black was associated with darkness and therefore associated with evil. You know, we were, you know, everything black was, you know, we, the, 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 the 17th century, Europe sought a, a state of enlightenment because if it's whiter, if it's lighter, you know, then that is what's better, you know, and then they, they put the evil of everything that they called evil into, uh, into Africa and they called it the dark continent, you know. And yet, if we go into indigenous knowledge, and I, I've got this diagram up for a particular reason, and it's, it's not just African indigenous knowledge, but uh, we know that um, all indigenous knowledge started from the mother. They came from here, you know, from Africa. So many people might be aware of the yin yang symbol, which, they, which is attributed to, uh, to China or to Taoist cosmology, which tells you that there's a cycle that goes from light to dark. It's a cycle. And in the dark, there's light. And in the light, there's dark. But we just have to come here to our own cosmologies here in Southern Africa to see that this is not a Chinese or Taoist uh, principle. It exists here, and we see it in our, in our Zulu uh, or Nguni shields, our sweat shields, where we know that actually when we embrace the dark and the light and the light and the dark, when we see that we are a totality and we know how to work with this, uh, this, this deity of opposition, then we are protected. And this gives us more information than the yin yang. This tells us then we have the shield that is our protection, you know. And this is what the shield is telling us that in every light there's dark, and in every darkness there's light. This is our protection, and this is our protection which we only can know through knowing ourselves. And this is why at this time of set we have to go within, you know, into space of of of, of reflection in order to know ourselves. So this brings us to uh, another question: Is set Satan? you know, um, is set synonymous with what the Europeans call Satan and how and why did the Europeans create Satan? And why is the construct of Satan a distortion of our ancestors' beautiful and meaningful expression of set? Let's go back here. We have said Europeans or Western dominant, uh, from the age of enlightenment, they conduct silo or linear thinking. And what is this linear thinking about? First, Everything is supposed to be a machine. They, uh, you know, from the age of enlightenment, everything was seen as a machine. So it became mechanistic. Everything was reduced to its smallest part. It became reductionist. 
the principle of objectivity, stepping away from a situation and taking yourself out of a situation became propagated for reasoned beings. It was a dualism became um, a separation between the higher and the lower, you know, became the order of the day. Monism, you know, seeing things as one as opposed to seeing things as everything, seeing things as either or instead of both and. Natural selection, which was propagated by Darwin or survival of the fittest, which is a, a cosmology or a worldview that brought in the economic system that we have today, which is all about competition. I must have, if I have, you mustn't have. Not we must share, which is our Ubuntu way, you know. And lastly, dichotomy and binary opposition, where it's everything is either or, nothing is both and. And yet what our African uh, cosmology tells us is that actually it is both and. It is both and. All of this is the totality of who and what we are. All of it is the totality. So this then is, 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 is the, what has brought about um, the concept of evil, the dichotomy. Dichotomy says there's good and bad. In ancient Kemet, in our ancient indigenous uh, um, spirituality, there's no distinction between good and bad. Everything has a negative and positive polarity. Everything. I, as Rotendo, have my negative and positive polarity. And it is in how this negative and, and positive polarity works within myself that I'm able to transcend from endocument, from the place of the mother, the, the place of supreme darkness, into a place of enlightenment where I create. And this is the principle of Pert em Heru. This is when Heru comes forth from night into day. So night and day are just aspects of the same cycle because as we've seen before, if there are no cycles, we'd be dead. Now what the Western paradigm has done, because the Greeks, as we know, were one of the last people to go and learn in Kemet and start to colonize Kemet, what they then created out of the gods or, or the deity set was a god who then became Satan, who then had an opposite, uh, um, opposite faculty to that with a deity or a principle that they called God. So they separated one deity from another instead of bringing them into a whole pantheon as we see in Kemetic cosmology and in our Southern African and Bantu cosmologies. That is a pantheon where all things interrelate with, um, with each other. And so from there, this dichotomy was created where there was good and evil, and then there was God and there was uh, Satan. And this Satan comes under many, many names. Lucifer, you know, who's considered to be the, uh, the, the god of pride. Mammon, greed. Asmodeus, you know, lust. These are the seven uh, sins according to Western cosmology. Beelzebub, gluttony or greed. Satan himself as wrath or Belphegor as sloth, as laziness, you know. We have Beelzebub, who's also seen as that who propagates false gods or idolaters. Pytho, which is the spirit of lying and liars. Belial, the principle of, of the inventor of all e evil things, of an empty. Asmodeus, the revengers of the wickedness. Satan, who imitates miracles. You know, he, the, the evil witches and the warlocks. Merihem, which is the purveyors of pestilence. You know, the pestilence, the drought, and the disease that we see today. Abaddon, who is the sower of discord, you know, Astaroth, the, 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 the one who brings around fraud and ac accusers, and then Mammon, who becomes the tempter of ensnares. So what we've seen here is actually a progression of steps. Initially, when Satan was created from the Greeks, you know, from the Greeks, it was just dealing with these seven sins, pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. But through the, the culmination of set, through the empowering of set, through the growing of set away from his nature. And so from here we see that, um, that uh, we, we, we have seen a trans transformation from the set as, as Satan as created by the Greeks from pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and laziness or sloth into the creator of false gods, the spirit of lying, the inventor of evil things, the revengers of wickedness, the imitators of miracles, evil witches and warlocks, you know, purveyors of pestilence. Right now we're in a, in, a, in a time of pestilence. Coronavirus is a time of pestilence, of disease. 
the sowers of discord and you know the, you're pulling things apart there's disharmony gender-based violence is, is 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 because of this discord fraud as we have seen all around us and then tempting and ensnaring this is what has now become set today you know where he has transformed from being a god who is a necessary opposition into just absolute chaos and mayhem and this is what the western paradigm has created and this is what we have unfortunately bought into and yes our leaders this is where they are as we are as leaders ourselves are operating from from these um, attributes of satan that we see today so what would um, I, and this is a depiction of, of, of Satan, one of the depictions of Satan, which if we look at it, looks quite similar to the depiction of Set, you know, from, from Kemet. So they have brought, brought this concept from, um, from our Western, uh, our, our, our indigenous paradigm, but they have changed his character. And one way that we can look at this change in character is, for instance, when in Shona we, we speak about Muroi, or here we speak about Muloi, you know, how this has changed over time, where in our olden days, we knew that one who lawyers is one who just turns, who is able to work with the principles of nature. It was not necessarily an evil being. But now through colonialism and through the bastardization of our practices and through the marginalizations of what we are, now that Satan has taken over the principle of Muloi or Muroi, you know, Muloya has now become an evil thing, which is premised upon these, uh, these sat satanic principles that we see as Satan has, uh, has got it there. So yes, Set, set is not Satan. Uh, Satan is a derivative of Set. But Satan is a distortion of Set because Set, set is actually a necessary deity who, if we understand a Set through African thinking, will realize that actually everything is about our protection. We need to use Set to push us into a place of introspection. We need to use Set to push us into a place of questioning, of inquiry. We need to use Set to look at, 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 at a place of saying, where are systems not working? How am I impacting my brother? How am I impacting my sister? What is it that has caused this destruction? Where is Ma'at lacking? Where has Ubuntu failed? Or where has Ubuntu been distorted? How is the Africa that we're in right now failed to uphold uh, Ma'at and uphold Ubuntu? This is the principle of Set, and this is, his, this is why we need him as his original form and not his bastardized form, which is the Satan that unfortunately is what is ruling the world today. That is so true and profound, uh, you know, Coco. But uh, I just want to say, you know, to come now at a personal level, because, uh, you know, each and every second, each and every hour, we are confronted, uh, you know, by this choice. We have to make a choice all the time. It's either we make, a, you know, a bad choice, which is a set influence, or we make a good choice, which is, a, you know, influenced uh, by Heru. Um, uh, and there's so many things, uh, you know, that happens uh, just naturally in our lives that uh, points, uh, you know, to the influence, uh, you know, of, uh, you know, set. You will find that uh, there will be a lot of uh, betrayal, you know, among, say, your friends, your family, you know, and the other people that you thought they are on your side, you then discover that actually they're not. You know, uh, they're just pretending to be on your side, but deep down, you know, there, there is that uh, set, uh, you know, influence uh, in our life. So how, how do we help uh, people to actually deal with, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, uh, choice making? Almost, uh, you know, all the time, every second, every minute of our lives, we are confronted, uh, you know, with making that decision. How do, how do we, you know, uh, do that, uh, Coco? <clears throat> Certainly, Mkulu. And I think um, it's a pity I do not have it here with me at the moment. But what I would encourage everybody uh, is to go to look at the 42 ideals of my art. And uh, if we look at those 42 principles of Ma'at, we start to realize what was it that our ancestors in Kemet used to do? They used to recite those principles every single night before they went into the hour of darkness, into the hour of the sleep. 
So they would look through the 42, you know, all the time, you know, and, uh, and, and, and through that, be able to weigh their hearts against a feather to say, today, in this solar cycle, from when the, moon, the sun came up to after the, the sun set, have I lived according to the principles of my art? Have I defiled my neighbor? Have I defiled nature? Have I, you know, poured, you know, urine into water? You know, have I defiled, you know, the, the environment around me? You know, and they question themselves at the end of each and every day to see how am I living my art? Because if I'm living my art, my heart will be as light as a feather. And then I'll be able to recognize the lie in the other. I'll be able to recognize the betrayal in the other. I'll be able to recognize where I'm lying to myself as well, because set exists in all of us, except, and not necessarily as an evil being, but as a negative polarity, because in each and every one of us exists the negative and positive polarity. Yes. So, so it is important that we, if we don't go back to, to self-reflexivity, you know, to, 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 to going into our place of conscience, you know, then what we are going to have, instead of the 42 ideals of Ma'at, we'll have the 72 confederacy of Set. You know, because Set comes with 72 evil brothers and sisters, you know, and they are far more than the, than the ideals of Ma'at. So we are asked all the time to check ourselves, are, are we as light as a feather? And then when we see um, um, our neighbor or our brother betraying us, or when, as, and there's a lot of backstabbing, there's a lot of fraud, there's a lot of, you know, these things which are taking place at this time, because set in the Satan, um, Satan mode is high, you know, as opposed to set in the necessary opposition mode. So we need to start recognizing that necessary opposition within ourselves first, and then seeing that necessary opposition within each other, and then asking ourselves, how am I and how are we living according to interdependence, interrelatedness, inter interconnectedness? How are we living according to the principles of Ma'at? Yes, yes, Coco. Just say, uh, you know, as we're about to close, I would like, uh, you know, your advice, uh, because um, uh, what uh, uh, made uh, my art leave, you know, uh, amongst the people was that it was a collective effort, which was uh, promoted by our leaders, our royals. We're promoting all those, uh, you know, principles uh, of my art. How then do we get the current uh, people you know, who are supposed to be our leaders to actually align, you know, to these principles of my art. Because if we were to, were to do this thing as a collective of African people, I think, you know, uh, there's a better chance uh, for us to restore my art. I'll make an example in, in, in Swaziland. When is the uh, Umshanga, the whole nation partake, you know, in that, uh, you know, festivity. But, uh, you know, uh, for us, you know, you and I and then other people who are concerned about this, you know, we, we cannot, you know, do um, uh, everything by ourselves because we lack the resources. People who are controlling our resources are actually, you know, acting as, as, as a buffer for us to actually, you know, make this, uh, you know, a, a restoration of my art a reality. They are squeezing us you know, in terms of resources. And yet this is their duty. This is their role that they are supposed to actually play on the continent. But they are operating from a, a Western or a colonized, you know, mindset, which then further perpetuates the colonization of African people's mind. How do we deal with this uh, leadership that is so ignorant, uh, you know, of themselves which then uh, makes them really leave, you know, the attributes, uh, you know, of said. <clears throat> Thank you for that question, Kulu. I think something that we're seeing and probably we're all experiencing now is firstly, um, at an earlier session that we had on Instagram, we spoke about the fall of Kemet and that actually everything is, is cyclical. You know, uh, empires rise, empires fall, you know, according to, according to particular cycles. And by the same token, um, leadership rises, leadership falls, and, and systems rise and systems fall, and cosmologies rise and cosmologies fall. 
And what we're experiencing now, and I believe many of us will be experiencing it, is that we've had these 500 years of slavery, colonialism, and apartheid, and all things that are the antithesis of um, what it means to live Ma'at, to live Ubuntu. And uh, what we're experiencing now is a resurgence of our ancestors coming. And they are coming and they're helping us, you know, because more and more people are turning, are having callings, more and more people are being called, are, are experiencing the, the madness of what it means to be called in by the ancestors, because our ancestors are saying right now, enough is enough. We've given you the time to fall. It's now time to rise. So one of the things that is incumbent upon us to do is to get into right relationship with our ancestors. You know, what are the rituals that we need to do for the collective? Because what we know from indigenous wisdom and from our indigenous knowledge systems is that I can impact something far away simply by doing a ritual. You know, so if we look, or I can do it simply by playing a drum. If we look, for example, if we look at Ngoma Lungundu in, um, in, in, in uh, Limpopo, you know, it is said that that drum, when it was beaten, would send the enemy to sleep simply by a ritual. You know, so what are the rituals that we need to come back into, you know, that we need to collectively come back into that have the power to start to shift the mindset of the whole, to shift the mindset of the collective, because it is just like a pebble that's dropped into a pool of water one pebble has a ripple effect, mm. you know, and this is what I see happening here with the great empire of Kemet, by calling everybody in to know thyself, by, you know, bringing back the, the, the knowledge so that people can realize that there's something else other than this dominant paradigm, which has colonized our minds so much mm. that we haven't been able to see anything else. We have gone along thinking the economic system that is there is the only way, yes. and yet there's another yes. way. So what we are doing here with the Great Empire of Kemet is opening our minds to see an alternative. And once we start mm. to see this alternative, then we'll be able to pull together the correct rituals and the correct ceremonies and the great processes to call our legions of ancestors back mm. into, into where we are now in order to be able to impact those who are, are, guy, are supposed to be, have the mantle in terms of the resources and the leadership. Yes, uh, I, I fully agree with you, Gogo, and I really appreciate. And, uh, you know, also just to, you know, encourage everybody that, uh, you know, we must all do the rituals. Melesi Pashe song. You know, you must never feel or think that, you know, your voice might not be heard why? because you have never been initiated. You know, go, upashe, you know, upashele yourself, upashele isizwe you know, uh, the nation, because uh, maybe it is through you, Umpashawako, that all Koko, the ancestors, will hear, you know, our cries and call for assistance, uh, you know, um, uh, to, to unshackle all these uh, chains that are really putting us, uh, you know, down. And another thing I would uh, like to say, you know, as we are closing, Koko, is that the youth have to... Uh, arm themselves with this content because uh, this is the content of the future. If you don't have or possess this content in future, you are going to be irrelevant because uh, this system, as we can see, it is slowly dying. As Ukoko says, our ancestors are assisting us, but we must be open up, you know, uh, try and uh, resuscitate that uh, eye of Heru, the, uh, the third eye for you to have insight so that you can see the future. So, you know, we're encouraging everybody, you know, uh, to, to, to go deep into themselves. And they see Pasheni song because as I always say, we are not going to win this battle with arms, you know, and guns and, uh, you know, bombs and everything. This is a spiritual war sitting at for us to reconnect, you know, with our, the spirit of the continent, you know, re revive and rebuild, you know, Ma'at, you know, in our hearts. You know, one day Africa must be ruled by such leaders that are informed by Umoya, the spirit. And also to say that, uh, you know, uh, and lastly, all republics on the continent a crime against African and black people. So that question still needs to be resolved. 
as you are living as an African person, you must know that your rights are being violated by the imposition of this social, uh, you know, economy, you know, structure that uh, we live, you know, uh, by. And, uh, you know, that is what we need to collectively as African and Black people work towards asking our ancestors to assist us to rebuild Ma'at, rebuild our identity, rebuild who we are as African people, as parents of these, uh, you know, Ngesizulu Sitamatsong and Zebe. As these were laying down, they brought the whole world into this, uh, you know, confusion that said, so we need to rebuild my heart. Because uh, they say that the only way that uh, we can defeat uh, a set is to live by the principles of my heart. We thank you so much, Gogo, for this time. And, uh, you know, uh, we will still be calling on you, you know, um, uh, even next week and that other week so that we continue, you know, we mustn't be, you know, um, uh, uh, be, be, be counted amongst those that are either silent, you know, whilst they have the knowledge, they possess the knowledge, and do nothing about it. Why? Because of self-preservation. Self-preservation is what has killed us right from the start. When you start thinking about me, 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 self, 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 that is when we are sacrificing the whole nation. So there's no ma'at in that attitude. So, Coco, you know, please, uh, you know, bear with us, be patient with us, call on you all for us to continue this of uh, rebuilding our identity as African people and also rebuilding, which is the most important thing, the principles of ma'at in our hearts so that, uh, you know, we go back to those, uh, you know, a principle that led our ancestors to rule the world during the golden era of the continent. Hotep, Koko, we thank you so much. Hotep, Mukuli, and I just, I just want to end with a proverb, an African proverb, just which speaks to what you're saying. And this African proverb says, you know, if you think you're too small to make a difference, spend a night with a mosquito. So I think we all know that we can all make a difference in one way or the other. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Makos. Makos.